Jorge Hernandez, NMCombatSports.com, USCombatSports.com, and the Low Blow MMA Boxing Podcast on Facebook here with WBA light middleweight champion of the world, Austin Trout. How are you doing, Austin? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? Man? It's a p- pleasure to have you, man. Uh, and welcome back to Albuquerque. How's everyone treating you so far? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Albuquerque is always so love, even before I was pro. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, I remember seeing you on those Ray Sanchez undercards, man. A couple of them. You, you were a youngster, but you had a lot of potential, man. Yeah, I was, I was looking for Ray Sanchez at that time. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the times, times change, man. Yeah. Now, now you're the man. How does it feel to finally be the man here in the state? That's Only good. four other people. I mean, Home, Bob Foster, Johnny Tapia, Danny Romero. How does it feel to be in that mention? Well, seeing that list that you just said, you know, that there ain't no slouches. You know, those are legends in the game. And to be added to that, that list is it's a great honor, man. Yeah. So tell us, what are you doing here in town? I mean, you're helping out the kids. and Yeah, I was talking uh, to some kids at Warriors Boxing Gym right here on San Mateo. Mm. Uh, you know, just trying to be a little inspiration. Because, you know, the biggest thing I want to, to tell the kids is that, you know, I'm a regular guy. Yeah. From a regular, you know, single parent home with no lack of supervision. Guidance. So, you know, I'm a regular guy that just worked hard to get what he wanted and it worked out, you know, God willing. Um, my main thing was to come and talk to the kids at the detention center and some of the sick kids at the uh, the hospital, and you know just try to be a blessing because I've been blessed. Yeah, well. yeah, that's incredible. I mean, how does a, a very religious man fight in a Diablo Stadium? <laughs> how does that? Yeah, you got a fight coming up with a Frank yeah, uh, Frank Laporte. Laporte here from the Australian yeah. here on November 11th. I mean, you'll be making your Showtime debut. How does that feel? It feels like being a champ, man. It, it was. It's, it's like my world title fight, getting yeah. that, that, that exposure that I desperately needed for my career. You know, I, it's hard to explain. I guess I have to tell you when I get there, you know. Yeah. It's a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. I'm anxious. I'm excited. It's a lot of emotions going on. What's that like to defend your title in pretty much what's your hometown, your home region? I mean, you were born in El Paso, right. but, I mean, you grew up there in Las Cruces. Yeah. That, that in itself is, is a dream come true. You know, I, I remember when I was 10, 10 11 years old, and in my mind, I would make just a little checklist of things I wanted to do when I was in, for boxing. And, and one of the biggest daydreams I would have was fighting for a belt in the hometown on TV. And so, just to scratch all those off, you know, and that's a good feeling itself. How do you? How does it feel to wake up every morning with the belt? Well, I actually do wake up every morning with it. <laughs> I sleep with it. <laughs> now the feeling is, is wonderful. You know, I, I don't. I don't really sleep with it every night. You know? Some nights, you know, feeling yeah. down. But to go wake up, you know, you go look, I go past the wall, and uh, they have these little mirrors in there. Yeah. So you kind of say, you know, who's the champ? <laughs> you are, you are, you know. It's, it's I can't explain the feeling. Yeah. You know, it's a dream come true. What can you tell us about your opponent? Uh, oh, he's tough. He's a tough, Laporta. aggressive, determined mm-hmm. guy. You know, he's got his shot, so he's going to take every precaution, every step to make sure he gets that and I have to take every step, every precaution to make sure he doesn't get it. Yeah. So, you know, it's going to be a good fight because he's a guy who doesn't care if he gets hit to get a hit in and he also um, has amazing heart and yeah. willpower. So, you know, it, it's, it's not going to be an easy fight like a lot of people want to write yeah. it off. I'm definitely not training for an easy fight. So, you know, I, I hope everybody could tune in November 11th because yeah. it's going to be some fireworks. And people... You know, are asking uh, why an Australian is this to possibly set up for a fight there for Dante Mundine? Obviously, yeah. he's the mandatory now. So, uh, is this to win over fans in Australia? Are you thinking of going to Australia to fight him, yes, or yes. are you hoping that HBO gets it here in the U.S.? Well, you know, I hope I would love it to be in the U.S. and I would also love it to be in Australia. I've never been to Australia. Uh, I've never met an Australian I didn't like <laughs> until I met this guy Mundine. <laughs> but uh, I've always wanted to go. So, you know, either way, I see, look, yeah. it looks like a win-win situation, but, you know, the fight with Laporto, my man just set that up, and it was, you know, brilliant marketing, I yeah. got a record, to set up this fight with Mundine, and, and, you know, depending on how November 11th goes, we'll have to see if Mundine's even a factor, you know, I don't want to look past this guy. Tell us about this tweef that you guys are having, this bitter <laughs> beef that you and Anthony Mundine are having, and also, did you see his last fight by any chance, and just yes. see him call you out right at the end? I did, and... and <laughs> You would think, especially after the performance he gave against Alvarez, a guy who I shut out uh-huh. after a year layoff, you know, I, I would think thought he would kind of reconsider all that calling out. But you know, he, he's a he's, he has a big mouth. You know, he does create a lot of hostility, and in some small way, shape, or form, I kind of like the guy. You know, uh-huh. it, it's weird. But the tweet we've been going back and forth on Twitter. You know, it all started when he backed out of our August fight. We were supposed to already fight in August. 
But he backed out and then told the Australian media that I was the one ducking uh-huh. him, that I would probably give up my belt before yeah. fighting him, and this isn't that. So I went straight to Twitter because that's the best way I know how to get to the guy and say, look, bum, I'm not running yeah. from you. You pulled out, tell the people the truth. Uh, you know, I'd be love to come kick your butt in your hometown. Are you getting any love from the Australians, though? Or the feedback you know, on Twitter, or whether it be online? I say it's 50-50. You okay. know, there's, there's people that are so pro mundane that they're just hackling me almost okay. every day. Like, no doubt, try to get your butt whooped by <laughs> Anthony the Man Mundine, blah, blah, blah. And then I got the other side of fans, the real boxing fans in Australia, <laughs> who know. And he's like, look, this guy has a big mouth. I hope you please shut him up. Mm-hmm. You know, swell up his lips so he can't talk anymore. Yeah. Black in his eye so he can't see. I want you to beat him up. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a good buzz either way. Yeah. Whether you love me, hate no, me, when we definitely. go, it should be a packed house. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, this is going to be your second defense of the belt. I mean, you did defeat Lopez and pretty much w- was his hometown. How does that come about, I guess, all these fights on the road and finally to have something at home? Is this like finally I can relax or do you just pick up the pace because you are fighting yeah I think I more have picked up the pace because it is at home you know it's weird being the underdog and being mm-hmm. you know the one that's booed all the time you you definitely want something to prove and I was kind of worried that if I had a pro trial crowd I might relax a little bit so with that fear in my mind I kind of just picked it up more so that way when I get in front of the crowd they even they're cheering me on or whatever I don't ever want to get comfortable. I want to just keep pushing. Yeah. What can you tell us about the card that's actually happening on November 11th down in El Paso? Yeah. Watch out that fly. Yeah, I'm just trying to swat it. No, but, I mean, you got Archie Ray Marcus making his comeback on there. Sure. How is it to have another local guy actually on it's the card? Great, you know, yeah. a, a guy with decent, you know, he has a decent following as well here in the yeah, city and, and then the and state. He's a good fighter. Um, you know, I remember Archie from back in the day in the amateurs when we were both amateurs and and Archie, he, he's definitely got good talent, and it's good. I'm glad to see him come back. You yeah. know, he, he really should be in the ring. And, and that last fight, you know, you just got to see what happened, go to the drawing board, fix it, and come back strong. So it's good to have, you know, a fellow, you know, New Mexico amateur stand out on the card as well. Yeah. And, and we have Jennifer Hahn who's going to be on the card, yes. and, you know, a bunch of guys from El Paso that are going to be there. And, you know, it's, it's going to be a good card because those guys from El Paso, they, they bring it, you know. Yeah, so, I mean... What happened? I mean, did it, was it just a fallout for the fight actually happened here in Albuquerque? Was it just too late of a notice for folks here? Or? You know, I have no idea because I, I, I actually would have rather to come to Albuquerque mm. just because it's my home state, you yeah. know, New Mexico. And plus the fight fans here in Albuquerque, they they just wonderful. You know, don't get me wrong. El Paso has some great yeah. fight fans as well. And, you know, you can get some, some fans from Juarez coming over. Yeah. And it's going to be a good crowd, but just because, you know, I wanted to bring my United States TV debut to New Mexico. That, yeah. That's kind of what I wanted. Even though El Paso is 40 miles from my hometown, it's just the whole New Mexico thing that I, that I wanted to do. And I couldn't tell you why it didn't happen that way. Yeah. You know, you have to ask my promoter or yeah. the four promoters that are dealing with this fight. Yeah, so from here, um, I mean, not to look past Mundine, but I mean, if you beat him, he's, you know, he's built a name for himself in Australia. And in boxing, he'd be the first guy to do three championships in reverse order, you know, right, right. super middleweight, middleweight, and then light middleweight. Which he won't do, but <laughs> yeah. he's attempting, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, for right now, the I guess the super champion would be Miguel Cotto. Yeah. Who, would you want him? Would you want anyone else within that? I mean, you got Alvarez, what You know, what and, uh, I'm the mandatory for the winner of Cotto and Margarito. Okay. So, in the WBA, has sent a letter saying that they're going to exercise my right to fight him or the winner their next fight where they got to give it the belt. So, you know, I'm definitely going to attack that angle mm-hmm. as, as hard as I can because, yeah. first of all, I'm tired of people calling my world title regular. Uh-huh. That's what I can't stand. This is a world belt. Why would I leave off of this yeah. guy, you know? I, don't, I can't name anybody who's fought for the super title. Not even Cotto. Yeah. They gave him that. So, but by, uh, with that all aside, Cotto and Margarita are very good names that I need under my belt to establish my legacy. So, you know, with, without the belts involved, I would like to get the winner of Cotto Margarita. How do, you, how do you see that fight? Do you see Cotto redeeming himself and actually, you know, erasing that loss that he did have? Honestly, that is now questionable as well. Right. I, um, it's, it's very, it's crazy. You know, you want to look at all the angles. You know, you look at it, maybe Margarita cheated. But at the same time, whether he cheated or not, Cotto hit Margarita with everything he had. Yeah. <laughs> and Margarita didn't down. blink. Yeah. Um, although Cotto is a much better boxer now than he was then, you know, he was more of just to come forward. Now he's, he moves and, you know, he, he could 
box a lot better. It's, and plus, he has something to prove. You know, yeah. he has something to prove. So with that little niche on his shoulder, you know, that could be with the the winning factor for him. And on Margarito's size, like you know, he had, had maybe he had the pads, which gives you a little extra mental boost in itself. Yeah. You know, and I, I think he's definitely not the same fighter he was when he beat Cotto. You know, you saw the Pacquiao how he busted up pretty good, and and he didn't look good for the fight before then either. You know, for that year layoff he had. So you know, I I think and I, actually I want Cotto to win. Um, nothing against Margarito. Uh-huh. Just you know, <laughs> I, I want Cotto yeah. to be able to redeem himself. Yeah. I reckon. And plus, I want to beat up Cotto. Yeah. Definitely uh, let the fans know how they can actually reach out to you or even get in touch. Yeah, yeah. Him. Twitter, you know, No Doubt Trout. Uh, you can go to my Facebook dot com slash No Doubt Trout. And uh, you can also go to my fan page, Austin Trout's official fan page on Facebook. And, uh, you know, I'm checking them all the time, you know, <laughs> to the dismay of my, my girl and my, my daughter. She's like, Dad, get off me. But, you know, I'm networking. Yeah. So you hit me on Twitter, hit me on Facebook, No Doubt Trout, and come rock with the kid. November 11th, Showtime, set your TiVo if you can't make it to El Paso. There you have it, uh, November 11th, Showtime, or, you know, go out there to El Paso. I mean, the Albuquerqueans make, make that drive down there. I mean, this is the first, I mean, male fight, championship <laughs> fight happening within this region in a lot of years. So November 11th, Diablo Stadium. Uh, Diablos.com is actually a site where you can actually pick up those tickets. Archie Ray Marcus and the WBA light middleweight champion of the world, Austin No Doubt. Austin, thank you very much for thank joining us. Appreciate it.